Hey everybody, Pastor Nick here. God bless you growing together Foursquare Church and friends. I, uh, I'm out here, outside once again. Boy, the weeks have just been flying by, at least for me. And um, this, this warm weather and everything, and everything's just so beautiful and in, uh, you know, in the garden and in the backyard and the fresh air, it's a nice breeze. So once again, I really just want to be outside today and uh, you know, I have a word to share, but first I kind of wanted to um, give us a reminder that uh, this coming Sunday, July the 12th at 10 a.m., we are going to be having corporate worship and a time in the Word and some fellowship at our new building in Hartville. We have not been able to meet. We haven't been prepared until just recently uh, to meet. We just got done training some volunteers for setting up the church for social distancing. And not only that, but we don't want anyone to miss out uh, that can be there. So we've even uh, set up an overflow um, you know, for extras that, uh, you know, if we fill up the, uh, the sanctuary. Um, and so we'll see what God does and, and uh, you know, use your best judgment as far as coming out. Um, some still aren't comfortable and, and some are still considered uh, high risk. And so you, you make a judgment call based on good wisdom and uh, what you feel for you personally is best for you. And um, so I'm really looking forward to that, and it's, uh, it's going to be a fresh new season for us. I really believe that. And um, I know that we spent some time over the last several weeks talking about uh, the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we went through Scripture, and in many ways we really pulled so many illustrations and examples from Scripture and we had I believe some good wholesome teaching concerning that topic and uh, <clears throat> you know as we understand Scripture and as we hear from God he forecasts things that are coming and um, you know one of the things that Scripture talks about is the latter rain and uh, it talks about end time ministry and it talks about signs of the end times and uh, scripture also you know lays out even in, uh, like the book Revelation um, in parts of Daniel and, and, and Isaiah and on and on about what we can expect in the last days and at the end of all things and, and the judgment seat and all these kinds of things and so it sets an expectation of things to come and things that God is going to do on the earth and things that are going to take place and I, I want to read some scriptures concerning some of this end time uh, prophecy from Matthew chapter 24 and then also Matthew chapter 7 and I I believe God would just have me uh, just lay out a couple simple things for us today that we can understand uh, perhaps a little bit better. And uh, <clears throat> if you want to read along with me, you could turn to Matthew chapter 24. And I'm going to read from verses 21 through 24. And then we're also going to go to Matthew chapter 7 after this. So we'll stay in Matthew. <clears throat> so Matthew chapter 24, verses 21 through 24, Jesus is speaking about some things uh, in the context of things to expect in the end times, uh, of which we are truly in more so than the apostles or any time in history we are in the end times 
and um, there is still more that God is going to accomplish on the earth and um, but Jesus was talking about some things to expect and we're, we're just gonna read four verses out of this because um, it's there's quite a lot in this chapter but Jesus says in verse 21 for then shall be a great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be and except those days should be shortened there should be no flesh saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened verse 23 says then if every man shall if any man shall say unto you lo here is Christ or there believe it not listen to this this is the this is the key scripture that we're gonna pull from from this chapter for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect then we turn to Matthew chapter 7 and we're gonna read from verses 15 through 23 beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravening wolves ye shall know them by their fruits do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruits but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit every tree that bringeth forth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them now listen to this the next three verses especially not everyone that saith unto me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven many will say to me in that day Lord Lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works miracles and then will I profess unto them I never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity I'm gonna read those last three verses one more time not everyone that saith unto me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven many will say unto me in that day Lord Lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works and then I will profess unto them I never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity so a couple of things that we can easily see and understand from Scripture we are warned that in the last days of which we are in there are going to be many false prophets uh, and that you know that really includes there can be false apostles false prophets false evangelists false teachers false pastors uh, And in Matthew chapter 24, it even says, let's read it one more time.
For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive even the very elect. Wow. So, according to Scripture, not only is it possible, but in fact it's certain that there are those on the earth, even right now, as these are the end times, that will be operating and are operating in uh, anointings to uh, do miracles, signs, wonders, uh, to prophesy. Uh, to do signs and it says if it were possible deceive even the elect and then when as we read in Matthew chapter 7 it says beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravening wolves ye shall know them by their fruits and even as we read in these last three verses in chapter 7 it speaks of uh, when people at the end of things when uh, there is a judgment okay and they're saying Lord Lord didn't we prophesy didn't we cast out devils they said didn't we prophesy in your name didn't we cast out devils didn't we do miracles he said unto them I never knew you. He's saying, then I will profess to them, I never knew you. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So, <clears throat> as we have spoken about the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, we've talked about wisdom and knowledge, words of wisdom and knowledge, discernment of spirits, tongues and interpretation of tongues and prophecy, uh, gifts of healing, miracles, the gift of faith. It is possible to be, to be bestowed with uh, the giftings of God's Spirit and yet even operate in those and yet never have a true intimate relationship with God. And because of a lack for some, according to Scripture, because of a lack of a real, actual, intimate, daily walk and relationship with God. These are false because of the lack of the intimate relationship and a true walk with God. In other words, they don't know Him. And yet, they are prophesying, they are operating in the giftings of God's Spirit, and they are deceived and they are deceiving and you see we must know them by their fruits and we must know when when we hear false teaching the more we understand God's Word and the more we know him and the more we know God's voice and the more we know the ways of his spirit and the more we understand his word we are going to detect we are going to be able to discern the falseness of others we are going to be able to discern deception when we know truth we are going to be able to know who is really his only if we really know God for ourselves when we really know the truth of his word, and I mean in our hearts, deeply uh, committed to him, in communion with him, to know his voice, to know his character, to know his ways, to know his heart, to know his will. To know his word is to know his will and to know him. And be walking with him. This is the most critical, important thing in these end times especially because it says if it were possible to deceive even the elect 
And so there is great deception in these times. There are many false ones, false Christ, false prophets, false, <laughs> false uh, believers, tares among the wheat. Uh, there are those that are false. Why are they false and how are they false? Because they do not really know God. Because there's no real walk. There's no real fruit of love. Joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, um, temperance. All of these things of God's Spirit. Because of a lack of knowing Him of a daily walk, and, and I'm talking about when the Spirit leads us to make the right choice. We've got to make decisions to follow His Spirit and to do what we know is right according to His Word. And see, that's the difference, is a true relationship with God. And you know, this also is personally applicable to us right now because I believe, I really believe with all of my heart, that if I understand God correctly, there are going to be ministries in these end times that are going to be operating powerfully in the gifts of His Spirit. Some will be false and some will be the true sons of God. And the only difference between the two is a genuine, intimate walk with God. Because if we're false towards Him, then we're false. But if we're true towards Him and with Him, and our relationship with Him is one of genuine quality relationship, an appropriate relationship to God, and that we really know Him, uh, we won't be false. And see, the danger is the deception. And not only that, but the danger is we can get sucked into this thinking that if we are operating in the giftings of God, in an anointing from God, or whatever the case may be, um, <clears throat> that that would replace a real relationship with Him. Church, we've got to really be wise. We've really got to walk close with God in these times um, that are here and, and the times that are approaching even yet. Um, we need to really know Him. We really need to know His will. We've got to be in His Word. We've got to have it <laughs> in us. <laughs> it's got to be in our hearts. We've got to know the truth so that we will perceive and discern when we hear a lie, when we see falsehood. We will be able to discern it. Why? Because we know Him and because we know His heart and because we know His will. And that is the most important thing. More important than operating in a miracle ministry, more important than prophesying, to know Him and to walk with Him and have a genuine relationship with Him is critical. It is critical and especially never more important than in these times because there is great deception awaiting those who do not know him, who do not know the truth of his word and are not discerning. And so, let's be real. Amen. And you can't fake a real relationship with God. Not a real. It's got to be genuine. And God is, he is real. God loves you so much. He wants to keep you in these times from deception. He wants to really spend time with us. He really wants you to know Him for yourself. And He really wants to keep us from the great deception. And that's why God is forewarning us of the things that are coming. And I truly believe that this ministry be one where those who truly want to know him will have opportunity and to really know real fellowship with God and with one another and I I really
really do look forward to spending time with you guys. I, I miss so many things about uh, getting together in person and um, singing his praises together corporately. And to sit and, and, and break the bread of his word together. I'm looking forward to this and I, I pray that this video is a blessing to you and um, I pray that you really find it in your heart uh, and obvious in scripture and what God is telling us today that uh, we need to really draw closer to him and we really need to uh, know the truth of his word. It's of critical importance and really a genuine walk and relationship with God is the most important thing for us. And so with that, I just want to let you know that I'm um, looking forward to getting together with you. And I pray that, um, that the times that we've spent um, apart only make it that much sweeter uh, when we get back together. And I know that this is going to be a special time. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you all. And so with that, I just want to tell you, God bless you. Stay close to Jesus and uh, walk with him and spend time in his word and let him speak to you today and every day and give him appropriate praise and thanks for his goodness towards you. All the things that are good in our lives, it's because of him. And uh, every good and perfect gift comes down from our absolutely perfect, loving Father. Amen. So give him thanks and give him praise today. And uh, just remind him that you really love him. Amen. God bless you guys. I'm going to see you real soon. Bye-bye.